We are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fly Tying Monday. I'm your host, Tom Rosenbauer. I'm going to tie all by myself today. No Tim Flagler, no contest. I'm actually going to tie this fly twice because it's pretty easy. And I'm going to show you two different body materials on it. So um, this is uh, this is a really, really easy fly to tie um, for the most part. It doesn't use many materials. It's quick. Um, it's relatively inexpensive except for the tungsten bead. And tungsten beads are not cheap and hooks are not cheap, but the rest of the materials are, are quite inexpensive and um, whatever you use is going to last you a long time. So um, anyway, this fly is called I can remember all these all these words the tactical hollow point jig nymph and it's not actually hollow it's holo because it, um, it utilizes some holographic tinsel for a little flash and um, i have bad news for you julie is still on maternity leave so phil monahan is here I know you all love Phil, too, but I think you love Julia more. Anyway, Julia will be back. I don't know when she, Phil, when's Julia going to be back? Do you know? Philip? Well, there's Julia's face right there. Yeah. Um, when's uh, I, well, it's three months, and uh, I think May. End of May? May, okay. Okay, so i got to do this for another month by myself, or with you. Not that I mind being with you, Phil. It's just well, a, thanks, Tom. But I know different. nobody wants to see me. That's yeah. fine. Come on, put your face up here, Phil. We'll put Julia's face up there. Put show your face. There's Phil. There is Mr. Monahan. So we have people. We have people from everywhere, from Glens Falls, New York, a, you know, about forty minutes from me, to Warsaw, Poland, which is more than forty minutes from me. Um, so, and we've got New Zealand and Indiana. And if you were uh, Littleton, Colorado, if you're, um, if you've never been on the uh, Monday fly tying before, welcome. We, uh, we tie a fly and you get to ask questions. You get to tease me if you want. Um, you get to make fun of me. Phil does, so you might as well. Um, and ask questions, challenge me, whatever. Um, so that's why we do it live, so that so that you can ask questions in real time as I'm tying it. So Phil, once I get tying, Phil will be reading the questions to me, and uh, I'll try to I'll try to answer them if I can. Have all we right. ever had a viewer from Antarctica, Tom? I think we've had all the other continents, but I don't. Think I don't we've think we've had Antarctica. Antarctica yet. We've had every other continent. There's there's uh, Queensland, Australia, so we have. What do you call that continent? Oceania? Sure. And what's Australia and New Zealand? It's a continent. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, we just called it Australia, but I think New Zealand yeah. would be mad about yeah. that. <clears throat> yeah, but it might not be. Uh... Oh, nice April Fool's Day post. Thanks, post Robert. Phil. Yes, grow your own, grow your own bamboo rod. I hope you all I hope you all saw that it was it was a post on Saturday. It was a lot of fun, and um, got a lot of a lot of engagement on it. A lot of people enjoyed it. It's still up I there. Don't think, people who see it now won't realize it's April Fools unless they click yeah. on it. I don't think we offended anyone except maybe uh, some certain species of bamboo, but you know, I don't think we offended anyone else. Anyway. All right, let's tie this. Let's tie this sucker. I'm out. Um, okay. Uh, it's tied on a jig hook. And I'm using a size 16 tactical barbless jig hook. I You could tie this uh, on any size jig hook you want. I've tied it down to an 18. And um, honestly, the, <laughs> the shank length on the 18 is about the same as the 16. I don't know. Uh, the shank length on these jig hooks seems to be not not quite conforming to the the standard, and I mean to measure them at some point. But um, anyway, it may be difficult to tie a, or to construct a really small jig hook. But I'm going to tie it in a 16 because when I use this particular fly, 
um, I'm going to use it to imitate smaller, smaller mayfly nymphs. So let's pull a hook out of here. Another this new package of jig hooks. Let's pull two out. And then uh, I am going to use a slotted tungsten bead, a black one, uh, a 3 30 seconds of an inch, which is 2.3 millimeters. You could probably go with one size bigger on this too, but um, I want this, I want this overall nymph to be small. So I'm going to grab myself one of these slotted beads and I'm going to look for the round hole, not the slotted hole. A little tough doing this this far away because of the camera. I can't even, so I'm gonna do this off camera so I can look closely at it. The beads, beads are a little bit difficult to get over these um, tactical hooks because the hook kind of points in, which um, it, it helps them helps to land fish. Um, because when you have a barbless hook, to have that little turned in point, but it's just a little bit trickier to put the bead on there. So um, you know, it's a little slower process. Now we're going to put it in the vise. Oops, there's what's going to look like. And I'm going to use two colors of thread on this. I'm going to use white and black. And you want this bead to sit above the center line. You want it to sit like that above the center line so that this fly rides upside down. And there is quite a bit of play in there. And to get it to, to sit right is with these little with these little hooks and these little beads is, is sometimes tricky. So um, what I do is I'm going to start with my white thread. And I'm going to start the thread behind that bead. And then I'm going to try to get that bead where I want it. And then hold my fingers there and just keep, just keep building thread up behind that bead. And I'm using 12-0 thread. If I was using a heavier thread, it wouldn't be so bad. Just get it, just get it so that it doesn't. I got to tweak that. Just get it so that it doesn't um, doesn't rock too much because you're going to put epoxy on this. It's about as good as I'm going to get it right now. Just so it doesn't wiggle. Tom, Mark wants to know if you could glue the bead on to save thread wraps. You know, you can, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't really, I found that it doesn't really help that much at this stage in the game. And the glue tends to sometimes run down into the eye and plugs it. So uh, you could try a little super glue. Uh, I, I don't think it helps that much, but you could. Yeah, certainly could. Um, we're going we're gonna to coat this whole thing with epoxy, so that bead's not going to go anywhere once we get the fly tied. So I'm just trying to secure it there until I, until I um, get a little further along. So now we're going to get some tails, and the tail on this pattern calls for um, Coq de Leon, which is a speckled uh, chicken feather. And this is a domestic Coq de Leon. You want to look for one like this one that has some nice, uh, nice barring in it, nice fine barring. Now you could use other things for this. You could use grizzly hackle. You could use partridge. Uh, you could use wood duck. Uh, the problem with things like partridge and wood duck is they aren't as durable. And I'm going to just strip the waste off this feather just to get it out of the way because I don't need it. And then I'm going to take, I don't know, half dozen of these 
just a small bunch. Pluck them from the stem. Lay these down so that they're, I don't know, three quarters of a shank length or so beyond the end. And then just tie those in, pull them a little bit up and toward you so that they, so that, because the thread tends to push them to the far side and you want them to kind of lay on top of the shank. And they go all the way to where the bend starts and then leave them hanging. And I can trim this waist here. Now I'm going to tie this with two different bodies. Uh, first, I'm going to tie it with a magic quill. And then I'm going to tie it with a peacock quill. Um, the, the, the body should be really thin and segmented. You could also do this with, um, you could do this with two colors of thread. You could you could have a, a white or a yellow thread body and then just rib it with a brown thread or a black thread. Uh, you could use a dark and a light piece of moose mane. You could use a stripped hackle quill uh, or peacock quill. I like this magic quill because it's, it's really durable. It's really easy to work with. It's tapered. Here's what it, here's what it looks like. Here's, here's what it looks like when you first get it. So it's white. That's the magic quills. People have asked about that. And then what I do is I, I decide what color I want my body, knowing that the thread underneath is going to be white. And then I just color it with a waterproof marker. And you want to let this dry for an hour or so. Don't just color with a marker and then start tying because the, the marker will come off until it dries. And then you just pick one of these pieces and they're tapered. Sometimes it's a little hard to pick one. Maybe I'll try from the other end. Mm. There we go. I had to bend it. And then just grab one, and it's tapered. So you can see that it's got a nice taper to it. And it's quite strong. And it's sticky on one side, so you want to tie it you want to tie it in with a sticky side, side facing up so that when you wind it, the sticky side goes down onto the hook. I don't think that matters a great deal because we're going to cover it with uh, resin anyway. So I'm just going to tie this in. I'm not going to tie it in at the very beginning. I'm going to tie it in where it starts to get a little bit thicker and just wind that forward. Go all the way to the bead, cut it off, and then give yourself a little bit of a taper about three quarters of the way up. So uh, might you might want to uh, spin your thread counterclockwise to flatten it, give you a little bit smoother body. And then I'm winding back, not quite to the tail, and then back, and then I'm winding back to a little bit, not not quite so far, and then I'm going to build this up a little bit. Because I'm using really super thin thread um, to get any kind of taper on the body, I need to build it up. So that's good enough there. Um, thin for the win is kind of the mantra of the, this. Is a this is really a Pertagon style fly. It's it's a it's a simple version of a Pertagon, but it's Pertagon style. And you want these flies to be really, really thin because uh, the thinner they are, the quicker they uh, pass through the water column because there's no resistance to, to the water. Uh, so you do want these flies to be thin all over. So I'm just going to wind this quill and I could put a fair amount of pressure on this. 
and I'm going to just get my nice segmentation there because the quill already has that dark line on it. It looks really nice. And then I'm going to go about three quarters of the way up and tie it off. Just a couple turns is all you need. Again, because you're going to you're going to coat this with epoxy. And then build up, build up, oh, before I build up my thorax, I'm going to whip finish and put on my black thread. Because I want the thread to kind of blend into that black bead. It's not quite black. It's kind of a dark nickel. So I'm going to cut my thread off. And now I'm going to start with my black thread. So I just start my thread here. Helps to have more than one bobbin, guys. And you don't have to re-thread your bobbin. And then I'm going to build this up a little bit. Try to stop that bead from wiggling. Build up a little bit of a thorax. Hey, Tom. A yeah. Roger would like to know if adding some wire would aid in the sinking and help with make a more tapered body. It would, but you'd have to have really thin wire and uh, it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to get it as thin. But yeah, you could you could add a little wire. Now I'm going to take some holographic tinsel. And you can make this any color you want. Uh, red, chartreuse. I'm going to use this, this fuchsia, which is kind of a reddish pink. It's just a nice bright color that's going to uh, create a hot spot. And you don't need very much, just a short piece of it. Short piece of it will tie about... Five, four or five flies, so you're not going to use much at all. And then you just tie in your tinsel. Let's hold it up right to, against the bead. Secure that tinsel. Make sure your thread goes all the way back to the body. And then just take about three or four turns of that tinsel, just barely overlapping each preceding turn. And go right up against the bead. And then tie that off right up against the bead. Otherwise, you lose a little bit of your, your hot spot there because you cover it with thread. Tie that off. Now, this is a really simple fly, as you can see, because I'm done, except for um, putting the, putting the uh, glue on it. I'm done here. You, uh, you know, when you, when you fish with a dry fly or a streamer, you don't usually lose that many flies. Because you're not fishing close to the bottom. With a streamer, you have a heavier tippet. But with nymphs, you're often fishing a fairly light tippet, and you're fishing close to the bottom where all the snags are, and you lose a lot. So you don't you don't want to form an emotional attachment uh, with your nymphs. You don't want to spend a lot of time tying them because you're going to worry about losing them, and then you're not going to fish them fish them where they should be, which is close to the bottom most of the time. So this is quick, simple. In fact. What I would do is, is I would tie a bunch of these and then do this, uh, do this adding of the epoxy last to a batch of flies. So I put some epoxy on there. I'm going to take my dubbing needle and move it around. Make sure I get it, get it on all sides. Right up against the bead. Try not to get any epoxy in that uh, hook eye because that'll really cause your problems when you try to thread it. I just work it around there. And one coat, I think, is enough. Some people, some people might put two coats on it. And then hit it with your, hit it with your UV light. Rotate it. 
slowly to make sure you get all the spots in there. And you're done. So quick, dirty, simple, um, effective nymph. And like I said, you can crank out a lot of them. And uh, you should because you're going to lose them. You're going to lose them. All right. So let's tie one with Peacock Quill. And so, Hold on. A couple uh, of questions first, Tommy. Okay, sure. Um, what is that quill material made of? It's plastic. I don't okay. know. It's plastic. Um, and Clear plastic. Clear plastic with a black line. Are peacock tail feathers a substitute for the quill? Would it still work? Peacock tail feathers, yes. I'm going to show you. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to tie one with the with the peacock. Oh, prescient. Um, so there's an off-topic question, but I'll save that till the end. Okay. So I'm going to grab another bead, and we'll start it the same way. Again, I'm going to put this bead on the fly off camera because I have to look closely to find that round hole on this relatively small bead. Just roll it around in your fingers until you find the right hole. I should be using that handy dandy bead threader that I got from Hairline, but I didn't have it loaded with the right beads. Okay. So again, in the vise, you want the bead to be up like that. Start your thread. Get that bead where you want it. You know what? Maybe I'll try a drop of super glue just to see. Not in this one. Ah. Too much super glue. It still kind of wiggles until you get things secured. And hopefully, I didn't get any in that eye. I should check right now. Hey, it looks clear. Oh, no, it's not clear. This is why I really like to have needles around, sewing needles, because dubbing needles really don't, are, are, don't really go through the eye of a fly. There. Okay, now it's clean. And we're going to come back and get a few more fibers of this Cocteau Leon. Put them where you want them. You have to stick your finger to the bead that you just put super glue on. And now we're going to prepare our peacock body. And again, you could just use thread for this body. You could use two colors of moose mane. But I'm going to um, use a peacock quill. And the best quill 
in a peacock eye is this stuff up here. This right down below the eye is where you get your best hurl, your really thick, fluffy hurl. This is where you get your um, finer hurl down here for tying things like Griffiths gnats and smaller flies. And then your quills for your body should come up into, actually into the eye itself. It's about the only use for the, the beautiful eye itself in a peacock eye. And this is gonna have hurl on it. So to get that quill look, uh, you can carefully strip it with your thumbnail and you just have to, you have to keep working it. And it breaks sometimes. It takes a while. And I turn it over. And you can see it's not all going away. So you can sometimes use a pencil eraser. And lay it down and use a pencil eraser to remove it. The other way to strip peacock eyes is to dip them in bleach. Uh, dip a whole eye in bleach. But you have to be super, super careful because uh, you have to remove it at just the right time and rinse it in water. Because if you leave it in the bleach too long, you'll end up with quills that are, that are super... Uh, um, brittle and they'll break so you have to you have to practice with a couple of couple of eyes before you but just clorox clorox or any household bleach will work and it does lighten the quill a little bit too which adds a little bit of contrast so a lot of people will bleach their quills something you can do at home or you can buy bleach quills too you could buy bleached and strip quills. But we like to make our own stuff, right? Okay, I think I got that as clean as I'm going to get it. And then you tie this in. Now, this stuff is pretty fragile. So you have to take a lot more care. That's why I like the magic quills because those magic quills are, are quite uh, durable. And if you nick them with the point of the hook, it's not a problem. Um, you can put a little more pressure on them when you wind them. But this peacock quill, I'm going to have more trouble with. Just Spin my bobbin counterclockwise to flatten that thread a little bit. Get a little bit of taper here. Probably enough. Okay. And I find that, um, I find that grabbing this peacock quill with hackle pliers, because they're so short, enables you to wind it easier so and you have to be really gentle and careful with this stuff and be careful of that hook point and you can see get that nice insect looking segmented body It is beautiful stuff, just hard to work with. Luckily, I didn't break that one. And once you, you know, once you cover it with resin, it's going to be fine. It's going to be good and durable resin or, or head cement or whatever. But if you compare that to the one I just tied, you can see they're pretty close, pretty darn close. And then we'll um, take our piece of tinsel and wind the wing case and do the same thing.
I want to switch to black thread. Build that up a little bit. Whip finish. You only need about three turns because you're going to cover this up. So don't need to do a full whip finish there. Tie in your black thread. You could leave it white if you wanted to. Or you could tie the whole thing with white and just um, hit your hit your um, hit your thread with a black permanent marker as you get close to the end to get that black. And I'm going to build this up just a bit. I want a little bit bigger thorax on there. That's probably good enough. Now I can tie in my tinsel. My fuchsia holographic tinsel. You could you could use any color holographic tinsel you want here. There's not you know there's not much when you get down to these tying these Pertagon style flies. Every you know every couple of days you see somebody on Instagram or whatever with a new Pertagon, and all it is is like they change the body or the thorax, but they all look the same. I don't know how much difference there is in them. And we wind our tinsel over there, right up to the bead. Tie it off right up to the bead. A couple more turns to secure it. Don't need to worry too much because we're going to clop the uh, glue on there. But finish. Again, probably only need three whip finishes here because you're going to coat this thing with epoxy. And I'm using, I'm using a uh, thin uh, UV cure epoxy, but I, I tried it with the medium or the standard of viscosity and it worked just as well. So I think anything but the thick, the thick UV cure epoxy wouldn't work on the smaller fly like this quite as well. And then I'm gonna spread this around with my dubbing needle or bodkin as they're called. So you get that little bullet pertagon shape. Protect that peacock quill and that tinsel. Give it a little shine. Help it sink. Hit it with the light. And you're done. So, you know, tie a bunch of these. Tie some little ones. Tie some big ones. Try some, you know, I, I think that uh, probably tying some with a red uh, holographic tinsel thorax and a chartreuse, which I've done. I've tied some in chartreuse. I um, think that's probably the only variation you need. But there it is. The tactical hollow point jig nymph tied with peacock curl instead of with magic quill. And again, here's the magic quill version. So, pretty darn close. That's why I like this stuff. It's easier to work with, and it looks just like Peacock. All right, you ready for a few questions? I am. I am ready. Um, our first is an off-topic question. Uh, okay. What, what material do you like to use for the body of a Pertagon? The green, the blue, or whatever. What, what material do you use for that? I don't know. Quill, thread. Um, yeah, anything that's thin and has a segmentation. Uh, Karsten wants to know what this fly imitates. Uh, probably a small mayfly nymph like a betis or some of the smaller, skinnier swimming mayfly nymphs. Um, and... 
Have you seen the Perdigons with a dollop of black or brown epoxy on the top of the head? Yes, and I else, have. Yeah. And someone else asked, uh, do you ever use black UV resin to add a wing case to the head of the fly? I do sometimes. I do sometimes. I don't think it matters that much, but I do. I'll use um actually don't I actually don't like the black uh UV resin because it's not super dark black like the wing cases. I prefer to use uh black nail polish, little a little dollop of black nail polish and then uh put a coat of clear epoxy over that. Um I, the black UV resin isn't isn't great. It isn't like solid black. At least the stuff I have isn't solid black. But yeah, I do put a wing case on them sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I again, I don't think it matters. Then we have two questions about thread color. Mm -hmm. Jamie, Jamie wants to know if the body isn't translucent, why not just use black thread? And then Roger says, could you use thread that's the same color as your tinsel? I, uh, so... So you do need you do need to use white thread if you use magic quill because it it would be very dark if you wanted a really dark nymph because that that magic quill is is translucent it's not um it, it's not opaque and even after you color it it's still translucent so I like the look of the white thread underneath the um <clears throat> the um quill the magic quill if you use peacock quill, yes, then it doesn't matter because peacock quill is opaque. So yes, you could. And I'm not sure about this using thread the same color as the thorax. Um, well, not with magic quill. It would show through and it might make the fly a little too bright and too flashy. You know, this is kind of a combination of a real insecty looking um, abdomen abdomen easy for you to say with uh with a flashy thorax that that catches their attention these hot spots seem to be very effective and i think the hot spot catches the fish's attention and then it sees the more natural part of the fly and decides to eat it i don't know uh, that's the theory anyway but yeah and then uh someone asked and it was answered in the chat but uh, why not just a regular bead? Why the slotted bead? Uh, it's harder to get them onto these jig hooks uh, to sit in the right spot. And why a jig hook? Mm -hmm. I would, I would, you know, jig hooks supposedly ride upside down more likely than than a standard hook, but I'm, I'm not so sure that uh that's true i think that uh i think that it's 50 50 and yes you could absolutely just tie this on a standard small nymph hook yeah um any any fly that you can tie on a jig hook uh or any fly that you can tie on a standard nymph hook you can switch to a jig hook or a standard hook they're i think they're interchangeable and it may be just the way somebody wants it to look or you know, perhaps the jig hook is going to be a little less likely to hang up on the bottom, um, but they work. So I use them, but I, I would, I would easily tie these on a standard nymph hook as well. Yeah. Without a slotted bead with a standard bead. What are some good substitutes for the Coq de Leon feathers for the tail? Uh, uh, grizzly hackle fiber, grizzly hackle fiber dyed brown, wood duck, Hungarian partridge, mallard feathers uh, all of those other things are not quite as durable as cocktail Leon, and they tend to break after a couple fish or you, sometimes after casting and that is you know you still want a little speckling in the tail because insects uh, have have speckled tails um so uh, but you could you could substitute anything you wanted there and uh william wants to know on any fly, is there an advantage to doing two or more whip finishes? How many whip finishes do you need? Well, if you're not going to put head cement on it, you know, if you feel that head cement or epoxy, if you feel the fish can smell it and it might put them off, then I would do two whip finishes. Um, 
for extra security. Sometimes I've seen people uh, when they tie with monofilament thread because it's fairly slippery and it, it's elastic and it doesn't tend to hold a whip finish as well. I see a lot of people doing a double whip finish with monofilament thread. But with standard thread, like we're tying with here, standard nylon or polyester thread, um, you know, a five turn whip finish, four or five turn whip finish, and a drop of head cement or super glue or UV epoxy is going to be as good as anything. Uh, where would you put this fly in a two nymph rig, top or bottom? Uh, depends on what my other fly was. If I was fishing this with a big stone fly, uh, I would put this, um, and this is attaching it bend to bend or to the hook. If I were, were going to attach to the hook bend, I would put this below a big stone fly. If I were to fish this with a little, a tinier fly, then I would fish this as the, uh, the first fly. Upper fly or lower fly depends on whether you put the, depends that you want the, you want the heavier fly on the main line attached to your tippet. So regardless, I think regardless, but, um, that being said, you could switch it around the other way too. This is all experimentation. There are no, there are no rules. Um, mm. You need to go out there and uh, you, can go with, you can go with a little bit of a preconceived idea with what you're going to do. But, um, you know, the, uh, all your plans uh, seldom survive the first couple of casts, to paraphrase uh, Von Moiki. Um, and Mark points out that you could also tie it as a tag end dropper where you could use it as a top fly, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And what would be the largest size you would tie this in? Probably a 12. Yeah, probably a 12. Um, if you're going to tie a 12, though, you, you won't, you probably won't be able to use peacock curl because it's hard or peacock quill. It's hard to get it long enough. So you probably wouldn't want to use magic quill. Or uh, or stripped hackle quill, you know, a stripped hackle stem will work. Any any thin material, just thread, just thread ribbed with another color of thread or wire will would work too. Just want a thin a thin body with with some sort of segmentation. We tied it this way because this is the way this particular pattern is tied. But you should experiment, and I'm going to experiment. Um, I, I kind of tie my own pertagons and I don't follow any, I don't follow any uh, official uh, uh, pattern dressings for them. I just decide uh, what, what color nymph do I want? And maybe I'll try one with a yellow rib. Maybe I'll try one with a gold rib. Maybe I'll try one with a green hotspot. Maybe I'll try one with a red hotspot. Maybe I'll tie one without a hotspot. Um, you know, this is just a kind of a style fly. Is that all the questions, Philip? That's it. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for coming today. It's fun to it's fun to answer your questions. Those are some some really good questions. Don't be afraid to change the pattern. Don't be afraid to innovate. Don't be afraid to experiment both the way you tie the fly and the way you fish it because there's no no right or wrongs in fly fishing. Um, this is just one pattern that I'm showing you as an example. And um, as you can see, you can substitute different materials for it. So thank you all. Tie some of these up. Give them a try. Let us know how they work. Let us know the next time you come in for fly tying. Uh, next week, I am not going to be here next week. But the following week, uh, I'm tying a April 17th, Monday, April 17th. I'm tying a really difficult fly. This is an easy one. I decided to give myself a really nasty one. It's the Spotlight Caddis Emerger. And I've actually never tied this fly. I have to practice it. But my boss, Tucker, told me he buys these from Orvis. And he told me that it's his number one go-to dry fly slash emerger, the spotlight caddis emerger. He says he uses it everywhere and it just works really well for him. So I said, hmm, I'll take a look at that. And I took a look at the 
the pattern and it's complicated, <laughs> but uh, I figure we might as well do a difficult one once in a while. So uh, we're going to tie the spotlight caddis emerger and uh, on April 17th and uh, it should be interesting. I, you know, I'm going to be practicing a week before we tie that one. Uh, so anyway, um, thank you for coming and uh, wish you all a great week and hope you're all uh, out growing your own bamboo rods this week. You know, it's good, probably a good week. The weather here in the east, the weather's starting to warm up. We're going to get some rain. So you can even grow those bamboo rods outside instead of, uh, instead of in the house. So give it a try. Anyway, thanks. And uh, we'll see you on April 17th.